Yeah. University of Michigan gets their man in Jim Harbaugh, officially introduced today as head football coach. And it felt more like a celebration. Now, it is a seven-year deal worth $5 million per year. It's a game of missed opportunities. The Browns had a chance to have their best record through 10 games since 1994. Instead, the loss to the Texans drops the Browns out of first place. Well, the league's top defense, they were tough. Breeze only completing 62% of his passes. Another interception, and it was costly. It gave life to the Lions. Sure, no Calvin Johnson, but it was next man up, and they delivered. Speculation is over. University of Michigan interim athletic director Jim Hackett has officially fired head football coach Brady Hoke. Says Hoke is a great man, but gave him enough time to win. So the obvious question is, who will be the next head football coach? Hackett said he has a short list, has a timetable, even has a search firm to help with the hire, but won't reveal any of his cards. We were left with more questions than answers. The Tigers have the fifth highest payroll in Major League Baseball, sent three reigning Cy Young Award winners to the Hill, and got swept. Nobody saw this coming. There's a lot of disappointment inside the clubhouse. And as far as next year, a lot of uncertainty. Will Max Scherzer be back? Will Torrey Hunter be back? A lot of questions remain with this team. After about a 10-year hiatus from competitive play, Kelly is back in that game, feeling those competitive juices once again, thinking pro may be a possibility. Alicia is a soft-spoken fighter with a powerful punch. Together with her coach, they are a vicious one-two combo, and they have Olympic gold in mind for 2016. Throw a touchdown pass, they'll cheer you on. Caught shoplifting $32.72 worth of crab legs, leaves you wondering, what's going on? Oh, Shonda, this is how it goes. I believe, I believe that we will win. Now all you gotta do is get that hand in the air, right guys? Get that hand in the air, add a little hop to your step. Here we go, it's that easy. Florida State needed a fantastic finish and they got it. Jameis Winston to Kelvin Benjamin right here in this end zone. Well, Gene, I can't let you go with giving us a little taste of what we might hear on the air. Give me something, because, I mean, we got a few days to go. Winston rolls right, he throws, it's caught, Calvin Benjamin. Touchdown, FSU! Now, what was great about the interview, if you saw behind Coach Babers, there was a mural with legends that played for the Lions. And when I asked Coach, hey, we're going to do the interview right outside your locker, he said, let's do it right here. I said, why, Coach? Why this spot? And he pointed to the wall and he said, that's my guy, Barry Sanders. So already, BG making themselves at home. Dan, again, we are now 38 minutes away from kickoff. Here's the video that's lighting up the world of Twitter. The video behind the firing of Bowling Green head basketball coach Chris Jans. You can clearly see he slaps a patron on the buttocks at a local bar. This is your T-Sports Report brought to you by Jim White Honda. I'm Jason Hurst. As a head coach, winning is important. Conducting yourself in a professional manner off the court, just as much a priority. BGSU made that known when they fired first-year head coach Chris Jans earlier today, and here is the termination letter from BG to Jans. It states he has an obligation to refrain from conduct that would embarrass the university. Now, according to this letter, that obligation was breached and is grounds for termination. The university issued an investigation into reports that Jans' behavior at a local Bowling Green establishment did not represent the university in a good light, and Jans was not arrested, but again, the university felt the behavior deserved termination. So earlier today, sports reporter Jordan Strack stopped by Jan's house. Jan's declined comment. Now, the BG Athletic Department didn't provide specific details, but issued a statement that included, quote, the university concluded that Jan's public conduct failed to meet his obligations as a head coach and the expectations that BGSU Athletics has for its coaches, end quote. The full statement is available on TweedoNewsNow.com. Jans was 21 and 12 in his first season at BG. He led the Falcons to their first 20 win season in more than a decade. In fact, I had a great relationship with Coach. Always granted me an interview upon request. Always referred to me by my first name. Now, because of termination, BG is obligated only to pay bonuses and not the remaining portion of his salary. Moving forward, assistant coach Mark Downey takes over the day-to-day -day operations and immediate search is underway to find the school's 17th head coach. All right, spring football also going on, and we got word today that University of Toledo star running back 
Kareem Hunt isn't practicing with the team all spring. He had a scope on his ankle after the season. Coach Matt Campbell expects Hunt to be ready to go in June. So that's good news. Meanwhile, out at practice today, they continue to work on that offensive line. A unit that lost all five starters from a year ago. That line paved the way for Hunt to have a huge year. But now they're essentially starting from scratch. This spring is extremely important for the Toledo coaching staff to get prepared for next season. Obviously, you know, we're mixing and matching guys every day with, with our first group, kind of for us, evaluating them and then trying to figure out who are those maybe five, six, seven, eight guys that we really can trust to play. I think what we found is we've got great depth. All right, that's your team sports report. And tonight at 11, we'll hear from BG football coach Dino Babers. All right. Thanks, Jason. Let's take a look. Shaquille Vance is one of the fastest runners in the world. As fast as a cheetah, one might say. He's lacing up his spikes, his eyes set on the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. What you don't know is he has only one leg. His right leg above the knee is a custom-made prosthesis with a cheetah foot. Vance is training for the Paralympics. Two years ago, an injury in a pickup football game forced doctors to remove Vance's right leg from just above the knee down. Football scholarships go on. I kept like constantly asking, like, will I be ready for the next season? Will I be able to play? The news just devastated. At first, I really wasn't interested. I mean, because I mean, I just lost my leg. I found out I wasn't going to be able to play football. So I was like, man, my life is over, blah, blah, and all this. But track is now an option. I never thought this was like even possible. I'm hopefully like motivating other people, you know, never to give up. Just keep pushing and keep trying. And, I mean, life is endless. So, I mean, just, just keep pushing and everything will be good. The walleye make a splash. For the first time in franchise history, the club practiced from inside Joe Lewis Arena, home to the Detroit Red Wings. Mike Babcock came and addressed the guys uh, before practice, and he was excellent with a great message. So one, it's a, it's a good experience, but just as important, it's, it's about the relationship between the walleye and the Red Wings. The walleye get to skate on the same ice as the Red Wings. How cool is that? Look at Gordy Howe's banner, Steve Eiserman. Championship after championship banner. This is where dreams are made. As soon as we stepped on the ice, uh, I just I got shivers. You know, the atmosphere is awesome. And you know, there's a lot of history behind this rink. And it's, it's really cool to be able to practice here. The next line is going to be ready. I'm going to dump it in and give it to you. Work on our four check. There's a lot of tradition in this building. And uh, just being up here for the day and uh, being able to practice and see what they do, and you know, a lot of our, a lot of our guys, this is where we all want to end up. Reporting from inside Joe Lewis Arena, Jason Hurst, T Sports. Helping others. Hitting this golf ball not easy to do. The University of Toledo women's golf team makes it look easy. Six top five finishes already this year. Fighting hunger, a tough battle as well. The Lady Rockets also winning in their community. What's today? What's the future? And um, what kind of difference are we making in Toledo? Every Wednesday, the UT women's golf team helps feed the less fortunate at that neighborhood church in Toledo. But their time volunteering goes beyond just serving food. This really feeds my soul, and I love coming down here. And so that's what I've seen happen with uh, Nicole and her team. We don't see this part of Toledo every day. It was eye-opening for me, but it was a good eye-opening. These people just need our help. Toledo has traveled nearly 13,000 miles for golf tournaments this season, maintained a 3.14 GPA, but the biggest reward, giving back. They're tired, I'm tired, but uh, we love coming down here because it's, you know, it's not just, it's not about making ourselves feel better, it's, it's about helping other people, you know, and serving, which is what life's all about, really. We are taught to be committed to what we do, and you know, we love doing it. So technically, it's a good commitment because we want to come back. It's not like we're being forced to do this. 